I thought I'd record my talk from the Data Mishaps Night, a fabulous Friday night mini conference where 16 people get, each gave a five minute talk about a data mishap experience. This was my contribution. Genome-wide association studies have been huge for human genetics. This figure is from a 23andMe study showing um, association between markers across the genome and self-report of being a morning person. Quite a number of genes show really strong association. Back in the day, we used large families to find genes. This is one of the families used to find the BRCA1 gene for breast cancer. The, um, a key insight in that study was to focus on early onset breast cancer. The, the black circles here are affected women and below each is the age of diagnosis. In between, there was a period where we thought we could just collect a bunch of affected SIB pairs. The idea was to look at the similarity of genotypes at markers. You know, from each parent, a SIB pair shares, um, well, has half a chance of getting the same allele. We look for regions where the proportion of shared alleles is more than you'd expect. And consider the SIB pair in the top left here. They both got the C allele from their father. From their mother, we can't tell whether they got the same allele or not. The idea is you um, estimate the, the sharing of alleles and look for regions where the affected SIB pairs are sharing more than you'd expect by chance. In 1998, I was a postdoc in Marshfield, Wisconsin, a couple hours north of Madison, where I live now. My advisor hooked me, hooked me into a SIB pair study of prostate cancer. I was to do some initial data cleaning and a basic analysis, but I was hoping that I could really show off my skills and be asked to do more. And my initial results were amazing. I don't have the original figure, but I still have the data. And so this is a reconstruction. The y-axis is negative log p-value. Um, adjusting for the scan across the genome, we're looking for a value of around three and a half or four. And we really have a lot of chromosomes with very strong association. Really, you know, almost every chromosome is showing an association. I saw these results and I was like, I am awesome. I'm going to be so huge. And I quickly faxed them off to my collaborators because, you know, that's how we did it in 1998, fax machine. Note that this is also a reconstruction. But almost immediately afterwards, I started to have some misgivings. And really the bottom line here is that if it seems too good to be true, it probably is. And the, the thing is that we really only have 150 SIB pairs here and they're all um, you know, old men with prostate cancer. So their parents are deceased. We have no, no data on their parents. It turns out that the analysis is quite sensitive to the estimates of allele frequencies. Like for the, you know, the SIB pair in the top left, um, are they really sharing the same alleles here or is it just that the C allele is very common? It's not obvious how to estimate the allele frequencies in, with these data. And in any case, my code had a bug that really screwed things up. If, if we fix that, um, the, the corrected results um, look like this. You know, there's a, a hint of association on a couple chromosomes, 15 and 16, maybe two, but nothing nearly so dramatic as what I'd initially seen. And actually this is about what you'd expect given the limited amount of data that we have. My collaborators were pretty nice about it and it ended up inspiring some more work in a paper. That paper also had an error, but that's another story. All right, the lesson here is if if your results seem to could too if your results seem too good to be true, they probably are. <laughs>